Yo, Team STC Donnie here with another Cavalier. Here we have, I believe this is an 04 LS Sport I'll be working on for a team member. STC Karma, he normally drives an SS Cobalt Supercharge, but this is his daily. Uh, he's in the military, so he's out of town. I'm going to hook him up today. So today we're going to do the timing tensioner. Uh, this is a common issue with, sorry about the sun, let me go uh, the other way for you. This is a common issue on any Ecotech. It's not just a Cavalier. It could be a Cobalt. <clears throat> could be an E-Tech 2. could be any version of an Ecotech. It's just how they came from the factory with a crappy tensioner. If you buy a Cavalier besides a regular tune-up, this is one of the first things you should do is replace the timing tensioner. Now, anything with timing sounds scary. And if you don't follow the steps properly, you could, well, blow up your engine. Because uh, this is an interference engine, and uh, if the timing goes off, which a lot of people does, mostly to people not replacing the tensioner, because that's the part that goes out, <clears throat> the valves will hit your pistons, and you at least need new head and pistons at the least. So, I might as well just get a new engine. <clears throat> so, today, I'm going to show you how to do the timing tensioner. I do use the new style AC Delco. I'll show you the part number. I'll show you what tools you need and all that. So, let's go ahead. The first step is going to be to open up the hood. So, come around this way. You open your little door, and you look inside, and so you can see, just go ahead and pop your hood open. Now, excuse my weird angles, I am mobile with the camera at the moment, of course. So your little latch, in case you never worked on or Cavalier yet, your little latch is right there. You're just going to push up, okay? You're going to pull up on the latch, bring it up. And then we have our typical 2.2 Ecotech in a Cavalier that has an Ecotech. Uh, it also came in Sunfires, and it also came in Cobalts and HHRs. It came in a few Saturns, and man, they GM put this engine in a lot of stuff. So it's not just for Cavaliers. But the biggest demise of these cars, people think they're so bad, but it's because they just didn't change the timing tensioner. It's like a $40 part. And it's really not bad to do at all, even if you have to rent a couple tools like the torque wrench. And you should torque it to spec. If you don't torque it to spec, it may not uh, keep your timing in time correctly because it may not have the proper ten tension. That's the point in a tensioner. So please torque it to spec. I'm going to show you all that in just a minute here. So let me go grab everything and I'll be right back. So what we're, what we're going to need for this job is it's a good idea to pick one of these up for any vehicle you own. This will have all your torque specs and everything, and I'll show you the torque spec for that tensioner as we go. You're going to need a one and a quarter inch socket. This is the same size as your oil filter, which is located right here. Uh, you can check that out in the oil change video for how to change oil on Ecotech, which is on this channel. Uh, and as far as the steps for taking the valve cover off, which we need to take the valve cover off for this job, that is also in another video on our channel. You can find the how to replace the valve cover and valve cover gasket in another video. Now we do have a rubber gasket, so if your gasket's not bad, you really don't have to replace it because it's very reusable. So you're gonna need a couple zip ties. You're gonna need a pair of pliers, some flathead, some snips. Safety glasses are always a must. I got my torque wrench so we can torque the tensioner. And of course the Phillips head. And then you're going to need the socket wrench to use your socket, of course. This is just to make my job a little faster taking the valve cover off. So, so you also are going to need a magnet. And I'll show you where the magnet comes in handy later because the factory timing tensioners can tend to fall apart. And as far as the tensioner, here's all your, there's your GM part number and everything. Okay, and I'll show you. This is what the new tensioner should look like. This is how the new style should look. Now, if this part is already popped out, you have to reset it, but that would be another video. Usually, it doesn't come reset because they usually package it with plenty of bubble wrap. But that's how the new style one looks. See how it's not all perfectly flat on the that part? It has a washer, a seal, and that's it. So, now we're going to start taking stuff apart. Also, before you start, I see I take off my wedding ring, and my I usually wear a Fitbit watch. And I usually wear accessory rings. Take off all your rings and your watches because you don't want to break your watches. And your rings can be very dangerous and get caught. I've seen a lot of people rip skin straight off the finger to the bone. 
take your rings rings and things off before you start. You can wear gloves if you want or not. You don't have to wear gloves. But it's a good idea to always wear safety glasses and take your rings off. Now if you're looking at, at the engine bay from the passenger side, so you'll have your computer here. This car is an LS Sport, so it has cruise control. You may not have cruise control, and that'll be one less thing in your way. Now, on our modified cars, we have moved all of our computers to a different location, which makes working on the car much easier. But we're just going to leave it where it is for this video. Unless it gets in our way, we could take off this bolt and show you how to just move the computer out of the way. Now, before you get started, you always want to take off your negative battery cable before you work on anything. It's just a good idea. There's a lot of sensors on these cars and everything, and you could easily mess something up if you fray a wire or pull a sensor out while it's plugged in. And that's just an 8 millimeter bolt to take out the ground on your battery for while you're working, and don't replace it until you're finished. Now the timing, looking from the passenger side, you can see the computer here, which will be on a stock vehicle. This car is 100% factory, so it's a lot easier for me to show you guys. So here's a coil pack and everything that we'll be taking off as per the other video we showed you. And then if you look underneath, right underneath the computer by this side of the valve cover, and we're gonna come around. So, let me get a good angle for you guys. That rusty looking large bolt, that is the timing tensioner we're gonna replace. We're gonna take that one out oh so carefully because they can explode and then we're going to replace it with a new one. And that is right on the back of the head, underneath the computer. See, so directly underneath this part of the computer is that large bolt for that one and a quarter. So I got the time, the, sorry, <coughs> the valve cover off. Uh, it is gonna be just a little easier, especially to get the large torque wrench in there, which if you don't have a torque wrench, you can borrow one from one of your local auto parts stores. Whatever auto parts store you have, they usually rent them out. They rent them, you get your money back when you return it. So you don't have a torque wrench. So this bolt right here is going to come off so we can get this computer and move it out of the way and that's going to make it a lot easier. So let's go ahead. There should be enough wire on this factory computer to be able to move it. By the way, it's a good idea to cover this whole area up so there's no valve cover so you don't drop anything in there accidentally. You know? And there's one bolt in the back here. We're going to remove, we got this top bolt out. We're going to remove this back bolt and so now I have carefully removed the computer. Be careful not to drop anything in here. You know, it is a good idea to cover it with a towel or something clean, clean rag or towel to cover the engine so you don't drop anything in it. This is where the other bolt was. That is a 10 millimeter. This top one on the strut tire was a 13 millimeter. And then you can just use a flathead to pop it out of this clip right here. And you just gently move it over. You don't have to disconnect anything. Okay. And then we can access this with a torque wrench, which is right below this area right here. But I did show you where the tensioner is, so that's where we're going to be working at. And we're going to loosen it up, and we're going to use the magnet tool on the inside in case the tensioner wants to fall apart. We don't want to drop anything in the oil pan, because then we have to drop the oil pan to get the pieces out. And that's just a whole another day of work. So we're going to use the magnet to make sure no parts fall inside by putting the magnet down in this section right here. Extend the magnet to catch any parts that may fall out of the factory tensioner because they have a tendency to fall apart which is the main issue and why these engines go bad with the timing one more part of this i don't want to forget to tell you guys some zip ties is a great idea this is not thing you have to be really careful with and we're going to stick it through the top hole in each cam gear to hold the chain in place if you don't do this it can move and it can skip does it usually not but it's a good idea nice and tight a zip tie on each cam gear to hold your timing in place while there's no tensioner because, well, it takes the tension off your chain and you want it to stay exactly in the same spot on the top and bottom. Now when you take these off, we're going to be extra careful when we cut these off, but you can see these are nice and tight. Now we can take the old tensioner out. So I also got my breaker bar. It's not a bad idea to use a breaker bar because that big timing tensioner bolt can be on pretty tight. So I'm going to go ahead and try the breaker bar to loosen it. Okay, so we broke it loose, so now we can put our breaker bar to the side, and I have my regular half inch socket, sorry for the dogs barking, I am doing this old school to show you guys, you can do all this stuff in your driveway, you don't have to have a special garage or a big shop or anything, you can do this outside in your driveway just as easy, so I'm going to go ahead and take this out, and then I'll show you what it looks like. Now here you can see the old tensioner on the right, compared to the left is the new tensioner, the new style tensioner. 
Now these tensioners, they fall apart right here. They just, they just come right out. So our new timing tensioner is in. We're going to torque it to 55 foot-pounds of torque. That's what it needs to be set at. There we go. So it's 55 foot-pounds. So there's 55 foot-pounds. I always like to do it three times to make sure. So now we're at 55 foot-pounds. Now I am at the point of activating the tensioner. Now just to note, if you can see down there, it's normal for some oil to come out, as you know, there's oil in the engine. Just wipe it off, you know, after your install. So we have torqued this to 55 foot-pounds. And then we're gonna go ahead and we have, sorry for the squeaky fender. I have my pry bar here. What you need to do is put your pry bar inside right here. It's better with a rubber-tipped pry bar also if you have one, or a soft tip, you know. You're gonna find the top of the black timing tensioner using a flashlight, which I don't have on right now. Let's see if that will help any. So, really doesn't help at the moment, but you're going to take this and you're going to listen and you're going to push this way down to put pressure on top of that black timing tensioner ever so gently. You push about an eighth of an inch in. You should hear it click and pull out and then you will now have tension on the chain. Now while I do this, I'm going to hold this to keep all the tension. See the difference how it's in the middle? This will keep so that the tension is in the middle and the slack will be towards the tensioner. So when you do activate the tensioner, that will make up for the extra slack and that will tighten your chain. So you gotta make sure the slack is on the side of the tensioner, not in the center, not on the right. If you have to, move it just slightly. See, that's only about a quarter of an inch of movement, not even. I do have my zip ties in place to keep the timing in check. So we're gonna go ahead and activate this before we put everything back together. All right, so we called over Dirty from SDC, because I need an extra hand, it just makes it easier. I got my pry bar on top of that tensioner. He's just holding it so the tight, the chain is tight here. All the slack is on this side. So you can either kind of try to push it like this, or you can just give it a little love tap, and you'll feel it. the tension come out, and you'll feel a little click. I don't know if you could hear it in the video, but it clicked. Now we have tension, he should be able to let go. And we have no slack in our chain. Before, remember, the chain was hanging down here. So now, like I said before, this is going to be the opposite of the reversal for the installation. We're going to take off these zip ties very carefully, not to drop anything in there. Cut off these zip ties, put on our back our valve cover, put our computer back, start her up and she has the sounds. So now everything's back together, you go ahead and start it up and make sure she sounds good and looks good. Check for leaks on her valve cover. Nice and quiet, no timing tick like a lot of these cars have. Hope you can hear me over the engine, of course. Yeah, that ticking noise is gone that it used to have. Nice and quiet. I don't see any visible leaks around the valve cover. I'll check the back, too. Of course, this is a cold start, so the engine's a little loud. No leaks. Everything looks good, sounds good. This is when you go ahead and take it for a test drive, and then you're good to go. You've now done your timing tensioner. So this is STC Donnie. We'll see you guys in the next one. Stay tuned and subscribe if you're not for more Cavalier and Ecotech videos and other car repair videos as well as racing videos. All that coming up and more. Stay tuned. See you later.